Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turner. This is the talk show and podcast where I have digital discussions, worlds of pop culture, sports, hockey, news, TV, music, everything really depending on the guests to talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On social media, you know me as PDVs. My guest is a hockey player, plays for Kamloops Blazers in the WHL, just won a gold medal with Canada at the IHF World U18s. Logan Stankoven is with us. Logan, welcome to Pop Turner, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Peter. Appreciate you having me on. I mean, you know, gold medal from the World's U18. I mean, for Team Canada, I mean, just firepower from the start to end of the finish. Uh, finish of the tournament, Logan. It was crazy. Yeah, honestly, the team we had was ridiculous. Some of the players, like Bedard and 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 right there, um, you know, they're a big part of our team, and and they led the way. So uh, it, was, it was fun and fun tournament overall, and I was glad to be a part of it. Has it still sunk in that they are like like young playing in that tournament like do you still think about that sometimes especially Bedard being 15 like that's pretty crazy honestly no I don't think it's sunk in for me uh <laughs> yeah just Bedard being 15 and, and Wright being uh you know 16 um you know they're just great players and uh, you know it's gonna be fun to watch their careers develop over the next few years and, and to see where they go you scored a goal in the in the gold medal game um and uh do you crave those big time game situations? Is that something like obviously everyone loves those games and the pressure and everything, but like for you specifically as a player, do you crave those big moments, Logan? Yeah, for sure. I love it. Um, you know, always always those big games. I mean, it's not not tough for me to to get up to. Um, you know, I love love those challenges and uh and, and I guess the adversity, um, I guess you could say. So um, you know, it was a lot of fun to, to be in that gold medal game. And, um, you know, Russia wasn't a walkover, uh, no. you know, they're, they're a tough team. So they were coming back at the end too. It wasn't like yeah. a sure thing. <laughs> yeah, no, they were all over us there in the third. So, uh, you know, our goaltender played well there and, and, uh, we found a way to, to keep the puck out of our net. Anytime you get to represent Canada at a tournament it's a big deal it's special but what we talked about before with everything going on with a, like not as much hockey being played this year and the uncertainty because of COVID-19 and the fact that this is also your draft year does this does it make this tournament m- like way more special way more important for Logan Stan Coven because of all that the timing and everything like there hasn't been as much hockey being able to play as usual you know what I mean and it's your draft year as well yeah totally um you know, I only had a handful of games in the WHL there. I think I only played six games and then seven or eight at the U18s there. So, you know, that's not even, it's not even 20 games there. So uh, with, with it being my draft year, you know, I really tried to take advantage of, of each one of those games and to kind of leave it all out there because, uh, you know, you have one or two bad games and then it can reflect badly on you. So I think it was important for me to, to have a strong start and uh, continue that. Guys like Wright, and of course, you know, Bedard don't have to kind of think about this, but you look at guys like Mason McTavish, you look at Brad Clark, you look at yourself, guys that are going to have the opportunity to get their name called this year at the draft. Um, you're going to represent your country, but I'm sure that's at, like that's at the back of your mind. It's kind of hard. Do you find it hard to kind of block out the draft from the beginning of the year to the end of the year because it is your draft year? Uh, it is a bit, but honestly, um, you know, our coaches and the coaching staff and myself personally, I didn't try and think too much about the draft. Um, you know, I think you just had to go to the U18 tournament and, you know, relish that opportunity and enjoy that tournament because, you know, you never, never know when you can get that opportunity again to to put on the Maple Leaf and represent your country. So you want to kind of take that with a grain of salt and just enjoy it, enjoy it and, uh, you know, see where it goes. So now it's no surprise. You aren't the biggest guy on the ice out there, <laughs> like size wise, right? Um, but you make up for it in heart and passion, and you can put the puck in the net. Are you happy that that narrative of not having to be like six foot three and everything? Are you happy that that narrative is kind of being over, like taken by skill and passion? Because I've, you've, you're seeing that over the years where it doesn't mean as much anymore. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, like you said, I'm not the biggest guy, so <laughs> I have to make up make up for it in some way. So, um, you know, I need to be quick and, and agile on my edges out there. So, um, you know, and, and definitely I think my drive and my passion for the game shows quite a bit. And I think it can really make up for it. So um, I think it's also, you know, a confidence booster to see, you know, guys like Caulfield and Garland and and Colin Blackwell and Dabrinka in the NHL there. Um, you know, they're having successful careers so far. So. I think that's definitely a confidence booster for myself. And, you know, it opens up paths for smaller guys like myself to come into the league. Oh, I'm happy you said Garland. He's a friend of the show. He's been on the show a few times. <laughs> I love, and it just makes me happy, man. Cause like you're playing in the CHL, right? You're playing in the WHL. And like that guy works so hard in Moncton in the queue and like faced so much like backlash of his, like, cause he was small. Right. Yeah. And it's just great to see guys like that just have a good career. Like it's a, it puts a smile on your face. Yeah, for sure. Which is awesome there. Um, it hasn't, it's like you've been able to play a little bit more. Like there's been a more gameplay obviously this year. Last year was like a complete blowout for a lot of people where they weren't able to play like any hockey at, at all. Like after like March and then onwards in terms of like, training like obviously you have more access to gyms and stuff but i want to know when you didn't have access to a lot of gyms and and a nice what were you like were any like specific things you were doing like were there any kind of stick handling exercises any strength exercise that you were just doing like what was that like i, I always ask that question because i find that interesting because sometimes you weren't allowed to go to the gym or go on the ice yeah so we didn't have it too bad in, okay. in camp loops here so i think it was as soon as the lockdown came i think we were kind of on House locked down for about a month, just over a month. So, uh, yeah, no gyms. Uh, you know, we weren't able to go to the rinks. So, um, I think I remember going to uh, a field nearby. Um, there was a school there with a big field. So, I went there quite a bit and did workouts and running and uh, lots of cardio stuff. And then at home here at my house, I've got a little shooting area. So, I, sh I was shooting lots of pucks and just trying to keep active as much as possible. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different not being able to go to the gym or, or be on the ice. But, uh, you know, you had to find different ways. And it was challenging at times, but uh, I think it really paid off. Now, true or false, because of a lot of tournaments like the Worlds and a lot of hockey players, there has been a lot of quarantine teaming that has happened for players like yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. No. With quarantining, you're kind of like hanging out not doing a whole lot of things there's been a lot of watching of things and binge watching it goes without saying what have you is there anything you've been watching on uh like while you've been quarantined that you've enjoyed like or any of your teammates recommended any shows or movies like come on there has to be i mean i know the video games are a huge thing too but you have to watch something cool that you could tell us yeah um <laughs> when when uh when the house lockdown kind of came like right after our season got canceled there um i watched a lot of uh outer banks and stranger things those were the two shows that i binge watched i think i remember finishing outer banks within like three days so. have you seen have you seen some of our outer banks interviews no, I don't think I have. We've interviewed we've interviewed uh, Rudy who played JJ. We interviewed po uh, Jonathan Davis who played Pope. We've we've had some big that the, that show elevated pop alternative. Like we did those interviews, they just exploded. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, so I, I was a huge fan of those shows. So I'm just waiting for the next episodes and next seasons to come out because I'm excited for that. Outer Banks was like a big one. Like I remember, like I think it was like the timing too, though, right? Like yeah. it came out right when everything shut down. So I think yeah. like same thing with Tiger King too, right? Like that stuff came yeah. out like when everything shut down. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's awesome. Um, when if so, someone's gonna have an opportunity to draft Logan Stan COVID in the 2021 NHL draft. Um. If someone does draft you, what type of player are they getting with Logan Stankoven? Uh, I think a guy that brings lots of energy to the game. Um, like I said before, I like to play with lots of drive and passion. So, um, you know, for me being a smaller guy on the ice, I need to be quick and, you know, bring that energy and, and force turnovers. So um, I think that's a big part of my game. But for me, um, you know, I love love scoring goals and yeah. being a goal scorer out there and a difference maker. So, um you know, it only gets harder as, as you move on, uh, you know, in hockey. So, um, 
like I said before, it's just, it's going to be tougher, you know, as I move up the ranks. So I think, you know, scoring goals never gets old for me. I love doing it. So I think that's, you know, something that I, I really try and uh, I guess, you know, uh, uh, keep my game going off of. So that's yeah. you know, big for me. So you played in the U18s and, you know, there are some players that aren't that much older than you when like Owen Power, Cole Perfetti, Brandon Schneider that are playing at the world championships right now. Is it safe to say that the way you guys are training, the way you guys are looking at the game in terms of kind of the new generation of players, like starting with McDavid, the speed and everything, is it making like, I don't know if you like, if, if you've seen this, but is it making you guys able to, kind of play in those big games and those big ice because like I, you're noticing a lot of players like yourself the skating is just unbelievable like the skating all what you guys are doing to enhance your skating is amazing it's safe to say that we're at that age now where guys can get ahead of the game a little bit more and play higher level hockey at, at a younger age because they're really focusing on things like the skating and the shooting and everything do you know what i mean by that yeah for sure um i think that has a big part to do with um the technology that's coming out these yep. days uh obviously the gear is so much better and and uh even the skates just the way they're built these days and uh you know there's a lot more i guess you know thought put in the game and um you know whether it's the the power skating coaches you work with or the skill coaches um you know there's a lot more to offer these days so i think that's a big part of it but um yeah i could say that technology as well as you know definitely plays a role in, in, you know, why so many players are great skaters now compared to, I guess, back in the day. Do you have any superstitions that you did at the Worlds or any of your teammates? Like, was there anything specific that you guys have to do before a game, like 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 with the stick tape? Or was there any anything there? Any, like, inside jokes or rituals with the team in the locker room? Um, Not really. Um, I know a few guys had individual ones, but yeah. I don't think we really had any team – um you know superstitions um yeah I, I can't really remember any but uh i know there were some funny ones between you know some of the guys on my team so it's it funny to watch sometimes it's, it's hard to predict right because you watch a bit of game tape and sometimes you have exhibition games but it's hard to predict like when you go on a tournament like that right it's hard to predict what the outcomes are going to be but did you know that you had a special group of guys that had like that firepower like before the tournament started, like, did you have an idea it was going to be like that? Like sometimes you don't know, but like there's a lot of skill on that team. Yeah. I knew we were going to have a good team, yeah. but I didn't think we were going to blow, you know, some of the teams out of the water as badly as we did. Um, I did not expect that as at all. Um, especially the first game against Sweden there. Uh, I thought it was going to be a four, two game, you know, four, three close game, but it ended up being 12, one, I think. So, I think it was just kind of a shocker to me and the rest of the guys. Just uh, I think it kind of set the tournament off on the right foot. Yep. It gave us a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, I think the guys believed in each other that, you know, like, hey, like we got a good team here. So let's keep it going. And, and you know, we good things can happen. So how many more U18s technically is Bedard eligible for? Did you guys talk about that? Is it could he play in two, two or three more? Like it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we actually we were talking about that with him at the tournament. You can play in two more U18s, so that's ridiculous. Oh my god, that is crazy. Yeah, um, that, guy, that guy's a cheat code. <laughs> it's insane. Um, for you, you know, you were 18, so you're gonna have, I believe, one opportunity to represent Canada at the World Junior Hockey Championship. Correct. Uh. I believe, uh, yeah, one opportunity, but this coming up year, I could get invited to the camp, but uh, it'd be the following year. Would be following year. year. Yeah. Does that come into mind? That's obviously a team you want to kind of break, uh, like, like play in as well. I mean, it, 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 it's hard not to, right? I mean, that's like the tournament. Yeah. No, that's, that's the classic tournament everyone watches at Christmas time. So, yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, hopefully I can get invited to the, the summer camp um you're coming up so yeah. um that would be awesome just to kind of get that experience don't expect anything at all um you know if if i have an opportunity to make the team you know that's obviously a dream come true but uh 
you know, it'd be the following years. It would be my year to make it. So, you know, that's something I'm looking forward to. Is that some advice you would give players just like kind of go with the flow, go with what happens and not overthink things? I mean, it's pretty simple. You've had a lot of success with that kind of attitude so far where you just kind of go in there, play your game and that's it, right? Not more, not much more to it, right? Yeah, no, I think that's definitely a big thing. Um, yeah. I think there's some times where I, I, you know, I catch myself overthinking about, you know, certain little things, but uh yeah, I mean, when you're going into situations, you just kind of have to go out there and, and do your thing and believe in yourself that, you know, you're there for a reason yeah. and everyone everyone's there for a reason. So, um, you know, you just have to go out there, do your thing. And, and uh, you know, if things work out well, well in your favor, then, you know, that's awesome. If not, then, you know, there's always other things to look forward to and improve on. So. And very quickly before we wrap up, any play, obviously Logan Stankoven wants to be Logan Stankoven, but in terms of the, your style of play and everything, are there some players that you model your game after that are playing in the National Hockey League right now? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think like a, a guy like Braden Point uh, or definitely Cole Caulfield. Just those are probably the two biggest guys that I like to emulate. Connor Garland. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like I love watching all those smaller guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I think all of them bring a different you know style of play to the table. So, um, but yeah, I I definitely like watching Garland play too. Too bad you know their team didn't make the playoffs, but uh, yeah. you know I'm looking forward to you know seeing him do well over the next you know few years coming up. Absolutely. Logan, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnip, and I wanted to also congratulate you on the gold medal performance of Canada. That was awesome to see. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter. Do you have a, do you have a, you have a, a, um, a safe spot for it, I'm assuming, some there? Do you ever go and yeah. like walk by yeah. it and stuff? <laughs> yeah, right in my room here. Um, <laughs> I've got my stick that I got each player on the team to sign in, in gold Sharpie. Yeah. From uh, the gold medal game, the stick that I used, and then... Um, I've got my medal hanging down from it in my room. So uh, those, those are like, I see every day. Those are, you got to frame that, that stick. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, it's pretty cool. So where can people follow you on social media? Keep up to date with everything. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram or Twitter. Uh, nice. Those are probably my two main. Is it just your name? Uh, Logan Stankoven. Yeah. I think Twitter is Logan Stankoven. And then my Instagram is Logan Stankoven. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Logan Stankoven and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.